Hi everyone, it's Chelsea here, bringing you another segment of Living in Southwest Florida. If you're thinking of moving to Fort Myers, Cape Coral, or any of the surrounding areas, and you're coming from a different part of the country, then you may notice that our architecture and our home features will be a little bit different than what you're used to. So I spent some time with home inspector Mark Davis from Trusted House Services LLC to break down key differences for what you should look for. But before we jump in really quickly, it would mean a lot to me if you go ahead and hit that like button so that the YouTube algorithms share this information with others and it lets me know what you like more of. And as a thank you, here's some footage from our Everblades hockey team. This was a great game as they and their opponents were number one, number two seeds in the conference, but our Everblades won. And really quick, I wouldn't be good at my job if I didn't remind you how much we love hearing from people all over the country and helping them buy and sell their homes here in Southwest Florida. So if you or anyone you know of are even thinking about moving, then feel free to use that contact information below. Okay, let's jump right in. This is Chelsea Robinson from the Robinson Home Group with Keller Williams, Fort Myers and the Islands. And I'm bringing you another segment of Living in Southwest Florida. Today, we are actually out in the field um, enjoying this beautiful weather because it is 80 degrees today in February. Wherever you are, I hope that you get to stay warm like us. And I am poolside today with Mark Davis from Trusted House Services LLC. And he is my go-to inspector because he knows it all. So I thought I would snag some time with him and kind of discuss what some of the differences are between Florida homes and Northern homes, or even some homes in the West, because you have experience out West and up North mm -hmm. and can help us with those differences too. So we have listed, I think, about 12 different things, right. some of them out here with us, some of them inside the house, and we'll walk around and kind of look at some of those differences. And uh, you ready to go take a walk with me? Sounds like a plan. All right. All right, let's go. So let's start out here because this is definitely something that doesn't typically come in a home up north. So, I mean, they do have pools sure. and they do have, you know, ponds, got yes. a pool and a pond, right? But the Lanai screen in particular is going to be something that's going to be a little bit different, right? Mm -hmm. So why don't you tell me a little bit about this Lanai screen? Well, it's designed, of course, to keep out the bugs. There's, there's various grades of Lanai screen. Some are designed to keep out the very smallest insects, the noceums. And it's a very dense weave and it's, it's a lot more, um, it doesn't transmit as much air. So it's, it's almost like a, a wall, a permeable wall. Uh, whereas a lot of these screens are uh, a lot less dense, transmit more light, and accordingly, more bugs. But <clears throat> out here, no seams probably aren't a problem. You, you typically have those closer to mangroves. So these, these screens are, are certainly fine. Great. But you don't have... You don't have cages up north, no. by and large. And these are awesome because they really extend our indoor-outdoor living spaces. Oh my gosh, yes. We definitely yeah. use these. But it is really important to know that there are different levels of the screens. Mm -hmm. and, and there's also sometimes like a, a see-through barrier that you can put along edges to give you a little bit more privacy. Exactly. If you want to. A very dense, lower level of screening, uh -huh. just for more privacy when you're in the pool. And then the thicker the screening, also the... Um, more UV it it takes out, That's which, correct. which affects your sunlight in your pool, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you won't get as much sun transmission. So if you if you really like like to sun out by the pool, a less dense screen might be appropriate. And out here in this in this environment, most of the bugs they have to worry about are mosquitoes in the evening. Mm -hmm. So. That's, that's kind of why you have a, a cage. Mm -hmm. It also will help filter out some of the dust and debris, right? Oh, Just certainly. Keep yes. your pool a little bit cleaner for a little bit a longer. A lot bit cleaner. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely yeah. not well, leaves, well, getting the leaves out Right, in the fall Espe and especially if you have areca palms and other bamboos or deciduous trees that do lose their leaves throughout the year. Um, it is a bonus. Yes. 
These, Good point. These um, cages also come in multiple colors, right? We mm -hmm. usually see white and we do see brown. Browns, uh -huh. uh, bronzes, kind of a rub bronze color. Uh -huh. And that's what's most popular these days. And you can see that across the way over there. A lot of the, yep. the uh, those are kind of a, a blackish gray. Some of them have a, a rubbed bronze. My screen cage has kind of a rubbed bronze look to it, mm -hmm. which is in the process of being replaced. Mm -hmm. Something to note if you do have the white ones, I think it, I have a white one myself and mm -hmm. we do have to keep it power washed pretty frequently because it can mm -hmm. um, get that greenish yes. algae type stuff on it from all of the humidity. Mm -hmm. So and you will have to clean regular the, washing. Yeah, you'll have to clean the inside of your cage periodically. To get, it catches uh, spider webs and, and bugs and windblown debris and dust, so periodically it is a maintenance concern, just like many things down here on the exterior of the house. A lot of maintenance goes on because there's a lot of UVs, a lot of rain, a lot of bugs, so. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about um, the shutters above our head right now because mm -hmm. this one actually has the electronic hurricane shutters. That Motorized, yeah. That then they come all the way down. And what's nice about this particular home, and this is very much an upgrade, is the fact that it actually has it in with the patio so that you can actually store all of your, your lanai mm -hmm. furniture and plants and things like that mm -hmm. here in the patio area during storms. Correct. But there's different levels of hurricane protection, correct? That is correct. Many of the roll down shutters are, are solid like this, aluminum. Some of the old ones are kind of a plastic material, which isn't the best. A lot of them now are a Kevlar material, which is, uh, transmits light, which is kind of nice mm -hmm. because they'll double as hurricane protection, but also if you have a western or southwestern facing house and that sun can get pretty brutal in the afternoons, even in the winter, you can drop those down mm -hmm. and still have light and airflow yeah, but and also also be protected during a hur hurricane event. Yep, and you can get that Kevlar too as you're screening, right? I had a listing once who said that their screens were oh, Kevlar for their um, for their patio. I maybe I think so. I maybe yeah. so. They, that yeah. would be very expensive screening. It was. Yeah. <laughs> so there are different levels of hurricane protection here. We're gonna have nothing at all. Mm -hmm. You're just winging it. Yep. Um, then you've got metal shutters. That's correct, that you hang up manually yourself, typically yeah. stored in the garage. You've got uh, accordion shutters, which are, they're okay, but they can get cranky. And, and if they're pre-installed too, right? Like they're pre-installed, like yeah, they're on the like outside, of your, outside of your house. You pull them shut during a hurricane event, lock them. But they, they require maintenance because they can have mud dauber nests forming in the tracks. So. Again, a maintenance issue that you gotta pay attention Keep to. Keep an eye on, right. Yep, so in my mind, the best type of protection is actual hurricane impact rated windows where you don't have to mess with them at all. They're there for protection. You have the windows. If you have a glass door on the front, it's also impact rated. So you're good. You don't have to mess with hanging metal shutters which are heavy and cumbersome and if you goof around and wait until the hurricane's on its way, it can be kind of windy mm -hmm. trying to put them up. And they're heavy and you'll need help. Um, these are great, but they can fail. I inspect houses all the time where to go to run the hurricane shutters and they just don't work because mm -hmm. they, they shorted out, they're burned out, they're off track. Any number of things can happen, especially in a marine environment. So anything you can have to, to reduce your maintenance or reduce the, the, uh, your, your personal activity during a hurricane that's already a stressful situation. A situation. Yeah, just have, just install hurricane windows. They're more expensive, but you get better uh, sound deadening, better insulation, and of course, hurricane protection. Yep. Let's talk about this door behind us that we've got open here. Ah, so. it's a fabulous sliding door. Yeah. So this is a big perk because we love our indoor outdoor living. We love being able to open up. You're gone. Hey. <laughs> so we, this is something that we see often, maybe not necessarily to the scale um, with the four panels, but having two panels or 
you know, three panels that kind of buckle into each other so that we can have our indoor outdoor yeah. living spaces. Is and pretty the, the flow through breezes are just amazing, yep. especially in the evening. Just amazing. Yep. Yep. That's why we're here. A absolutely. Right. Yep. So let's talk about the, what this is built out of. This is concrete block and stucco here. It is. That's correct. And you can tell on, on houses how you can see how thick it is here. Mm -hmm. So on a wood frame house, the windows would basically be at the same level or slightly inset from the wall itself. That, that's how you know it's a wood frame, wood frame house. But stock, stucco down here is very common. In fact, 90, probably fully 90 to 95 percent of the homes that I inspect are concrete block and stucco. Mm -hmm. Wood frame houses, they're not as common down here, but people have a, a misconception that wood frame homes are not good. Mm -hmm. And I disagree. Mm -hmm. I live in a wood frame house myself. Mm -hmm. It's a two-story wood frame house, an old Florida style house up a little bit north of here. And I inspect wood frame houses all the time that have survived all the hurricanes down here, mm -hmm. you know, since the, the 40s, 30s, some of them down, down on McGregor. Mm -hmm. um, so there's nothing wrong with a wood frame house. Mm -hmm. But the, major agree. the majority are stucco over concrete block. Yep. S concrete block seems to be the preference because of the strength. Strength um, and low maintenance. Right, exactly. Um, wood frame, I do see just from uh, a, the real estate perspective, the insurance does tend to run higher, mm -hmm. um, but the home cost is lower. So you can get a little bit more bang for your buck in a wood frame house. Mm -hmm. And if you're especially pushing your price points to get into something, then a wood frame may be a really good option. Right. But make sure that you run the insurance numbers to yeah. be sure that it does remain in budget. Cause and make sure you have a, a home inspection done that with a person that is cognizant of the issues to look for with a wood frame home, like moisture intrusion, rotting exterior, Mm -hmm. uh, cladding, yep. uh, the siding, etc. Many wood frame homes have been converted to a vinyl siding, which ha is is good, but it has its own issues. Uh, many have been converted to a stucco as well, right? Or they were initially stucco. And let's be clear, there's no such thing as a perfect house. Brand new no. construction will still have its own issues, <laughs> so it's yes. it's likely that you're going to find something, and no matter what you purchase, because there is no such thing as a perfect. House. All houses right. have some sort of yeah. You know, there is no perfect house. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, buying a used house, I'm always amazed at, at buyers who buy a 30-year-old home and expect it to be perfect and pristine with no issues. Mm -hmm. What's a 30-year-old home mm -hmm. that may have been renovated a number of times in that period? Mm -hmm. Old equipment, older equipment, older roof. Mm -hmm. So no perfect house. Everything is yep. a compromise. Yep. It's what, it's what quirks can you live with and live and That's not, exactly right. right. What can you live with? Right. So um, stucco is maybe something that people aren't really as used to seeing around here. Are there anything special, like any sort of tricks or things that they should be looking out for with stucco? Um, not really. Uh, down here you'll see, it, it's common to see hairline cracks in stucco. Okay. Uh, we don't have a lot of foundation issues here in this vicinity, in this mm -hmm. you know, little slice of heaven we call southwest florida right. uh, the soils are relatively stable they're sand soils as opposed to up north you've got clay bearing soils clayey soils silty clay soils expansive clay soils like that they have in colorado and various areas out west that wreak havoc with foundations mm -hmm. so i don't see a lot of foundation issues here and Unless, that was our number five, was slabs and, yes. and crawl spaces and foundations and soils. So Correct. let's go into that. Most everything down here is uh, con poured concrete slab foundation, slab on grade foundation. Mm -hmm. Very simple technology, very long lived, been doing it for years. Mm -hmm. um, I see a handful of crawl spaces mm -hmm. uh, here and there. Probably more likely with those wood frame homes, right? Um, no, not necessarily. Really? Not necessarily. Uh, it just depends on, on their construction methodology. Many of them have a stem wall that bring the house up higher uh, with, with backfill, mm -hmm. slab on top of that, oh. uh, part of it with part of a crawl space. So there's, there's any number of configurations that I see with a crawl space. A lot of crawl spaces are under a manufactured home or 
um, a home that's been moved. There's, there's a number of homes here in, in Cape Coral, when they put Ventre, Veterans Parkway in, they moved them and put them on stem wall with a crawl space. Just Very bizarre. Cool. Yeah, a lot of them. Yeah, they just moved them. Picked them up, moved them. <laughs> Inst installed, the, installed Veterans Parkway. <laughs> So yeah, um, slab on grade is, is very common. Okay. And I see very few foundation issues. But translating that to the, to the stucco we were talking about, yes. oftentimes in stucco you'll see hairline cracking. Yes, I wanted to ask you about that. Yes, which I see a lot of. And in many cases it's a result of people not installing guttering. And you, you do have some differential settling as a result of that creating hairline or step cracking in the stucco that translates from the concrete block wall to the stucco. Mm -hmm. It's really nothing to worry about. You just keep it, keep it patched, keep it painted, um, and put gutters on your house. I see houses down here without gutters all the time. Builders say, oh, you don't need them. We've got you know, uh, you know, sandy soils. The water just soaks up and goes away. Well, yes and no. You do have some hydraulic differential in the subsurface that does cause some some movement and every house has movement that's just right. they, they breathe in and out right so anytime you can minimize moisture at the base of your foundation anywhere be it southwest florida or anywhere in the country put gutters on your house people get the water away from the foundation yep and it keeps the water off the side of the house keeps the algae off the side of your house keeps the dirt off the side of your house keeps the splashing off the side of your house from the, the drip edge. Just a good practice. Is there a certain number of gap that you look for when it does become a problem? Yeah, eighth of an inch or larger okay. or vertical offset. Okay. If you see movement, either a V or back and forth, mm -hmm. that can be a problem. Okay. But hairline cracking, see it all the time. Great, okay, so I'd like to go take a look at the roof. Okay because the roofs here are very different than most people are used to. Yeah. Um, let's go step out. Well, you know out. what? Well, let's go, let's go step out and, and we'll talk about this one and the ones around it, okay? okay? Okay, so I wanna talk really quickly about roofs because our roofs are gonna be a little bit different than what people are gonna see up north. Um, why don't we talk about what this one is? Okay, well, this is a, a standing seam metal roof. There are a couple of types of metal roofs. One is a standing seam, which is the, really the best type of metal roof you can get. And the other one is a metal roof with fasteners. So instead of the nice standing seam, you have fasteners. They're both good roofs, but this is the more elegant and the more expensive, but not that much more expensive, but a, a, the better, better metal roof you can buy. And it is a hip roof. So each face of the roof meets at a point at the bottom that, that is a hip roof. Like that, that house over there, I don't know if you wanna pan over there real quick. That is a, another classic hip roof. You can see the hips on every corner. And we like those here in particular because we get high winds. Yes, wind resistance they... with a, a hip roof is much better than a gable roof or, another, or a flat roof, something of that nature. So, and from an insurance standpoint, the insurance companies prefer or give you better insurance rates, better insurance credits if you have a hip roof. And a metal roof, in my opinion, is, is the way to go. They last longer, lower maintenance, better all around. Um, let's talk about what the other levels would be, though. So we've got shingle. Shing asphalt fiberglass shingle, okay. which is very typical Midwestern roof. Mm -hmm. See them everywhere. Yep. Cost effective, um, easy to maintain, easy to install. A lot of good things about them. They don't last as long as a metal roof, but it's a you get a good architectural asphalt shingle roof. It's a pretty good roof. Okay, and what a tile was another tile? Option. Another roof. Uh, variety of tiles. You have a cement tile. You have a, a uh, clay tile. Um, they're heavy. They last a long time, uh, but they're very difficult to main. Or they're expensive to maintain. They're expensive to replace. And if your tile roof is over five years old, you might have trouble finding replacement tiles if you have some sort of damage or a wind event. So tile roofs are great, they're, they're pretty, but they're kind of a maintenance, maintenance issue. If you, wanna, 
if you want a low maintenance roof that's going to last a long time metal metals <laughs> metal's my favorite personally i've got my i i have a metal roof um house i just had i just put a put a brand new asphalt fiberglass roof on it went through the hurricane fine nothing wrong with it but um their their uh, shingle roofs are less expensive um, they look good the new architecture architectural asphalt shingles look you know spectacular um every every roof has its pluses and minuses but in my opinion these are the best way to go okay why don't we talk about the things that we won't see very often with roofs here okay so like the cedar yeah you won't see cedar shakes and shingles down here uh, i have yet to to inspect one i take that back i've inspected a couple of mansard style fourplex condos that are common over in fort myers with the cedar shakes that you know again it's a maintenance issue they deteriorate over time they're I see them slowly being cycled out for a, a metal skinned uh, roof that looks like shakes or metal roofs. Okay. Uh, how long can people expect roofs to last around here? Well, it's not really how long they last, it's how long the insurance companies yes. will allow them to last. And that's where I'm going with it. Right. Because you can, put a, you can put a shingle roof on a house and unless it doesn't leak, or less it leaks, you're good for years and years to come. But here our insurance starts to get a little tricky. Right. M many insurance companies will not insure an asphalt fiberglass roof, regardless of whether it's a three tab cheap shingle or a really high end architectural asphalt shingle roof that's older than 10 years. Mm -hmm. That's not all of them. No. Many, the, the, the cutoff is 20 years. Right. And so. I do have insurance agents who will handle older roofs mm -hmm. and if it is over 20 years oftentimes insurance companies will allow you to get a roofer out to do a four-point inspection um, which is just a very brief description mm -hmm. of a four-point inspection yeah and they'll give an opinion of report. the anticipated life left of the roof right and then as long as the roof isn't leaking and they've got a report from a roofer you can find insurance or a qualified, the older it is, or a the qualified more home inspector or there we go or a qualified <laughs> home inspector um, and when you get that, keep in mind insurance may be slightly higher with an older roof because that is one of those items that yeah. they do tend to charge a little bit more for. Definitely. The newer the roof, the less expensive mm -hmm. the home insurance will be. Correct. All right. Anything else I'm forgetting on roofs? Mm, I don't think so. Okay. Keep your roof clean. Oh, and put gutters on your roof. And put gutters on your roof. Yeah. That's right. Um, okay. Let it, let's go talk about water shutoff valves. So let's head around the side of the house. I think it was over here. There we have it. <laughs> All right, so, let's talk go, about this. Go ahead. No, go, go for it. We'll, let's talk about this. Tell me so, about water it, shutoffs. It, typically in the Midwest or other parts of the country, because of the cold, your main water supply shutoff is typically in the basement. Here in Southwest Florida, where we don't really have to worry about um, freezing issues, mm -hmm. the main water supply shutoff is on the outside of the house. And it's typically a ball valve. Some of the older ones are gate valves. If you have, get a house with a gate valve on your main water supply shut off, chances are it's leaking or it needs to be replaced because it's not functioning properly. And this is very reliable shut off valve. So up and down with the flow is on, crossways is off. Okay. So people need to keep in mind that they're gonna find this out here. Mm -hmm and not in a basement. And we do not have basements because we have such a high water table. That's correct. All right, let's go ahead and head out to docks and seawalls. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about seawalls and docks because this isn't something that most people are gonna find in their backyards. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> down, here, <laughs> down here in lovely Southwest Florida. I'm sorry, I was just enjoying the sun and the looking at the water. I forgot I was supposed to be doing something. Okay. Um, Let's talk yeah. about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, down here in Southwest Florida, you know, the, living on the water is, is not uncommon. Right. Look, we've got a, somebody out enjoying the water now. Uh, but a seawall is a, an integral part of waterside living. And a seawall that is, is fully functional and, and uh, 
Now compromise is very important down here in Southwest Florida. So um, very typical seawall right here. Looks like it's in pretty good shape. It's got a, a dock attached to it. So accordingly, we can't see the seawall face, but a very typical dock setup, other than the fact that you don't have a boat dock as you do over here. Um, or over there. Or over there, or over there. Or over there, or yep. over there, over yep. there. Yeah. So, so we've got different levels of configurations for homes that are on water here, right? That's we've correct. got where it's just this, well, we've got where it's nothing, right. but that's not salt water. Here, right. salt water, you're required yeah. to have a seawall, yeah. um, or at least specifically Cape Coral, since that's where we're at right now. Um, then would be the seawall, and then would be like a captain's walk, would you say, would be the next level mm -hmm. up? Mm -hmm. And a captain walk is going to be the concrete that kind of flows in, right? Oh, you mean the, uh, like a little cantilever dock? Right. Yes. Those were the, those were on. I don't see any over here. No, yeah. this, this is all newer stuff. Over where I used to live in the Yacht Club, just Much about every fun. house has a seawall, cantilever dock that sticks out over the water, and then the seawall picks up again. Yep. Um, those are, I had one, ended up cutting it off, pouring the seawall cap over it. Um, but yeah, there, there's many configurations. Um, some on a point will have a, a captain's walk all around the point mm -hmm. with a dock. Uh, some areas don't have a seawall per se, but have riprap in, in some parts like Fort Myers. Uh, some of the North Fort Myers has a number of just riprap seawalls. And explain what that is. Uh, just large chunks of, of coral or concrete that, that is laid in front of the property to deflect the seawall or to deflect the wave action. Kind of like and, a natural seawall, basically. Yeah, yeah. Well, more natural. Right. It, it was put there by man, but it's just rock or right. concrete, right. chunks of concrete, as opposed as opposed to a nice poured concrete we seawall. We see those in Boquilia and Pine yep. Island often mm -hmm. as well. And I like them. I, I think they're very pretty. Yeah, they are pretty. But they're not. A, you know, they're a little more dangerous because they're not nice and smooth and. Yeah. Are they less elegant. effective? Oh yeah. No, no, seawall? they're they're very effective. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, then you'll see a dock. And this is a composite wood, correct? That's correct. And you can well, see regular a, wood, through like water. Yeah, you've got, you've got uh, wood pilings, wooden substructure with a composite plastic hydrocarbon based uh, planking as opposed to wood planking. Many like this one are wood planking. They're more susceptible to, to deterioration over time. Whereas these are a lot more long lived easier to clean and uh, just a little more elegant look. Yep. And no splinters. Yep. Which is big. Which is good for barefoot. Right. And boat owners, if you don't have a boat slip to pull your boat into, you can tie up to the Sure. Yeah. Yeah, our our tidal influx is not like you see on in the Pacific Northwest where they have feet of tidal flux. Down here we've got, you know, a foot here foot and a half there. Okay. Not a lot. So you can easily manage tying up a boat. Okay. The key is having the proper um, boat uh, bottom, anti-fouling bottom on it if you're going to leave it in the water. Okay. And then, um, so then we've, from, from this, we have the boat slips that you pull your boat into mm -hmm. and then boat lifts that lift the boats out of the water. Correct. And those are typically electrical. Yes. And they can have various ratings for pounds. That's correct. So 7,500 pound, 8,000 pound, 10,000 pound is typically what you see. Many of the bigger boats have, of course, bigger capacities, but your average boat dock is a 10,000 pound boat, I have a listing right lift. now with a 13,000 pound yeah. boat lift. Mm -hmm. so, um, yep. A behemoth of a boat lift. Yeah. So, and then some of those are even covered and not as like across the across the way here mm -hmm. they've got theirs in the boat slip with the cover mm -hmm. and ab up above water on the boat lift yep so. that's a typical 10,000 pound boat lift with a canvas or rubberized canvas cover great all right so we have a couple of things in the house that I want to talk about real quick so let's go ahead and head back in okay okie doke all right we're back indoors and there's a couple of things I want to talk to you about in here particularly uh, three like our tile floors. Okay. Most of Southern homes are going to be in the interior, pretty similar to Northern homes, right? 
um, but we got a couple key differences. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about mm -hmm. tile and the prevalence of tile in Florida. Yes, tile is the preferred floor covering in Southwest Florida for obvious reasons. Um, easy to clean. Mm -hmm. It's not, you're in and out, wet feet, carpeting's not an ideal medium. Sandy toes. <laughs> Sandy toes, water, the pad will hold water, it'll start to smell, uh, potential for mold growth, things of that nature. Uh, so tile is a very clean, elegant solution for this, uh, for this neck of the woods. And it's cooler as opposed to, um, you know, carpet that tends to not be cool. Right, <laughs> I'll right. Say. Uh, it almost hangs onto the heat, it seems like to me. Right. Um, and this, this is more reflective of the heat as opposed to holding on to it. Right. Yeah, those cool tile surfaces mm -hmm. really help during the summer and mm -hmm. keeping a house. And slightly. if you have dogs, they'll love it. <laughs> they like to lay flat out on their bellies on the tile floor. But something I do hear often is wood is used in other parts of the world, mm -hmm. other parts of the yep. country than it is here. And um, one of the main reasons that I usually give people for that is the fact that we've got such a high humidity, wood, humidity. Mm -hmm. don't not, the best, not the best match. Yeah, you, you've, got, you've got your doors open and closed, doors open and closed. You've got the air conditioning coming on. You got a lot of expansion and contraction of the, of the wood itself. So there's a lot of simulated wood products. The luxury vinyl plank flooring is, is, has been recently, I see that in lots of homes. Mm -hmm. And it looks really good. It's come a long way mm -hmm. from what, you know, the, 20 years ago your floating floors look like. Mm -hmm. But yeah, not very much wood here um, and mostly tile is what we're gonna see. Mm -hmm. Another way to keep cool is gonna be ceiling fans. We do tend to have more ceiling fans in our homes here than maybe other parts of the country. Yeah, yeah, they circulate, circulate air, air very well and uh, just kind of give it that, you know, tropical theme, if you will. Right. <laughs> ceiling fans going. Yeah. yeah, it'll help you know push down that cool air and, mm -hmm. and keep it a little bit cooler. Yeah, during the summer months. Um, and then let's talk about HVAC because that's a very different system, right? Or air yes, conditioning. yes, it is down here. Uh, of course, HVAC down here. One of the primary reasons, of course, is to keep cool, but it's also integral in getting rid of the humidity in your house. So, um, just a, a handy tip: if you're leaving your house. A lot of people say, well, I'm going to turn the air up to 83, 85, so, you know, save a few dollars. But your house is not being dehumidified by your HVAC system. So if you're going to leave your house, put your thermostat at 77, 78. Yeah, it's going to cost you a few more dollars, but it's going to dehumidify your house. And if you did have a water leak somewhere, the chances of it turning into a mold situation are much less because you're going to be removing the humidity from the air. Are there any differences in that system too, like the actual mechanics of the system that allow for that? Uh, on the air conditioning side, no. It, we just have a lot of humidity down here and it removes it and, and gets rid of it through uh, a condensate drain that daylights outside of your house. Um, typically, in the, in the Midwest or other parts of the country the West, um, it's the same split system. You had your outside compressor or heat pump, and inside you have your what we call an air handler. In the Midwest, you call it your furnace because mm -hmm. typically you have a forced air gas furnace in the Midwest, and it's all contained in one unit, which we call an air handler down here. But we don't have a forced air gas furnace. We don't. Most areas down here don't have natural gas, um, and it's all electric. Mm -hmm. So we have a resistive coil or resistive plates inside the air handler, and that's your heater. It's like the emergency heat on your heat pump for those in the Midwest who have a heat, a heat pump. So, you know, our heating needs aren't, here aren't great, but every now and then you want to take the edge off if it's a little cool in the morning and, you know, you don't want to put on a sweater. We, we rarely turn our heat on ourselves. We just mm -hmm. put a sweater on mm -hmm. or whatever or tough it out. And uh, so, so it's just a resistive heater that takes the edge off. Mm -hmm. It's not a big, robust, forced air gas furnace, high BTUs, pumping you know, loads of heat into the house to keep it, you know, when it's five degrees outside, 
You know, it might be 50 degrees outside here. Definitely a different need. Different, definitely a different need. And you did actually mention something that we should mention. So number four was the fact that most of the area, not all of the area, we've got Babcock Ranch and mm -hmm. some of the newer construction yep. going on in Fort Myers Correct. will have gas. Yep. But Natural gas. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Um, but most of the rest of Southwest Florida is going to be electric only. That's correct. Yeah. Correct. So, and many cases have retrofitted their houses because they like to have a gas stove. So they'll have a propane tank buried in the yard, providing gas to their, their kitchen stove and oven, and probably an outdoor kitchen mm -hmm. if they have one. Yeah. So those are things to be on the lookout for mm -hmm. if you do prefer cooking with gas. Um, there are going to be fewer areas unless you do add in your own propane. And right. the same thing with fireplaces too, because we don't really have fireplaces right. and sometimes you will find them, but they're almost always going to be wood burning. Uh, yeah, that, that's true. Or a lot of the newer ones are, are electric, you know, the, right. just the, the faux wall fireplaces. Right. That's not a real fireplace. It's not a real fireplace. So boy, <laughs> nice to just put a but push a button and turn it on and you get whatever color you want out of it. Uh, but yeah, I do see on, on some of the higher end houses, I, I do see some pretty nice fireplace setups. Um, but again, you can tell that they might have had one or two fires in them. Mm -hmm. And they're a 30, 40 year old house. So. <laughs> So fireplace use down here is very small. Minimal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think Maybe it's they, more for aesthetics. Yeah, right? <laughs> or yeah, you know, Christmas. Maybe they'll throw throw a, a log in there for Christmas. I don't know. When we moved back into our current house, there was no fireplace, and um, we had just come back from living out of state. I grew up here and came back here, and when uh, we came back, I missed my fireplace, mm -hmm. and so we've got the electric fake one right. for right. just for the aesthetic but it's it's not the yeah. same <laughs> well there's a all, all new tvs have an app a fireplace app you can just you know flip that on yeah <laughs> a nice 75 inch fireplace <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much mark for your time thank you for having me always a pleasure i really appreciate it I hope that was useful for you. As I mentioned, Mark's information can be found below. If you have questions about the data or if you'd like to drill down and compare specific neighborhoods like say Cape Coral versus Fort Myers or waterfront homes or pool homes or whatever your specific circumstances call for, then feel free to reach out to the contact information below as well. Myself and the network of agents I have throughout the United States are here and we're ready to help you with your move. My video schedule can sometimes be erratic, so if you'd like more videos like this, then don't forget to hit subscribe so you'll be notified when we drop another one. And if you're ready to go ahead and get that ball rolling for your move in Southwest Florida, then there is a link in the description below to set up a personalized home search that will be tailored specifically to you. Oftentimes when we search on web aggregates, it limits our capabilities, but when I build out this search, you're gonna have many more options available, and then we can really begin to have a conversation about what your home in Florida is going to look like. Or feel free to use Cape Coral Fort Myers Real Estate.com for all the latest listings to hit the market and really begin getting comfortable with our marketplace. There's no obligations. And don't forget to add me on social media and follow along as we post weekly articles and information that you may find handy and give you some insight as to what life in Florida looks like. As always, we really appreciate it when you leave us a comment, hit that like button, subscribe button, and notification bells so that you can be notified when we drop future videos that may help you with living in Southwest Florida. As always, thanks so much for watching. Until next time, I wish you much health and happiness.